what a Scientology agent will do is they'll get a list of everybody you know, including your doctor, your dentist, your travel agent, whoever, your friends, your family. They will then contact every person on, on the list, whether directly or on the phone, and say, we're gathering information about John Atack or whoever and their criminal background. We found out some really interesting things already. I was told when the head of the harassment division in the UK defected that they'd spent two million pounds harassing me up until that point. Hi, I'm John Atack. I'm an expert on Scientology. A long time ago, I was a member. Uh, and I also am an expert on authoritarian cults in general. And I'm here to answer questions from the honesty box. What is a Scientologist and what do they believe? Scientologists are followers of a man called Lafayette Ronald Hubbard, L. Ron Hubbard. And he basically devised a science fiction set of uh, beliefs and techniques. In reality, Scientology is an elaborate system of mind control and thought reform. Scientologists believe that they have lived for one and a quarter quadrillion years. The origin story is the idea that we're all individuals completely uh, who separately came together in our multi-billions to create the universe. And we do that at every moment. So the universe is an illusion generated by the people within it, the beings within it. Core beliefs are quite elaborate, but the essential belief is that we are all gods. We all have godlike powers, and we've lost these powers because we didn't want to hurt others. And so what Ron Hubbard promised was that he would give us magical abilities, um, the ability to intend whatever we want and make it happen in the world. This hasn't proved to be true. Why did you join? Uh, because my heart was broken. I was 19 years old. I'd come back from a, a tour in Toulouse. I was playing drums in a band. And I came back to find my girlfriend, who I'd been living with for 15 months, had gone. And uh, I freaked out. And I went looking for help. Didn't find anything uh, substantially. And then was introduced to Scientology by a book. And I went along. People were incredibly friendly, uh, very smiley. Uh, smart people, and they seem to have something that I wanted. And so it began. How is Scientology structured, and how do you progress through the ranks? There are two elements to Scientology. One is the, the staff Scientologist, and the other is the public Scientologist. Public Scientologists pay a great deal of money to undertake processing, as it's called, and indoctrination. Those are the words used. Processing, some people say, is a form of counselling. I would disagree with that. It's a form of hypno hypnotism. The structure of Scientology is a hierarchy, very strict hierarchy. Um, there's no democracy of any kind in Scientology. I have a man called David Miscavige who took over from Ron Hubbard after Hubbard died. And he basically determines exactly what Scientologists will do. And there are hundreds of organisations around the world, though the membership is far smaller than people would usually imagine. It's about 25,000 internationally. If you were a staff member in Scientology, you would start out as a gopher, somebody who basically does what they're told and uh, fetches the coffee. And you would then be assigned to a particular division in Scientology, and you'd work your way up until you were perhaps the head of that division, so the treasury division, which deals with finances, or the public division, which deals with recruiting. Then you have executives above that, and you have an incredibly complicated set of organisations that are all pretty much spying on one another. If you are unlucky enough, you rise to go and work with David Miscavige himself, who lives in a secret location to avoid process servers uh, from the courts. He has a violent temper. Um, he is a short man, but, but physically you know, he exercises, he fires a crossbow, we're told. He has been known to punch people um, when he's lost his temper. He controls people. He is a very dangerous human being. And of course, he has the control of Scientology's funds, which are perhaps in the region of $3 billion. So you know, he, it's probably best not to get on the wrong side of him. What am I doing here? Will you be in danger from making this video? 
Yes, there is some danger. Uh, I have been harassed and uh, I've been sued many times. Um, but hey, what the heck. Would you say you're an easily manipulated person? No. Um, have you ever met anybody who thinks they're an easily manipulated person? I once interviewed a young man who'd come out of Scientology, who'd been in the 14 people governing Scientology, and he said, the great thing is, John, we'll never be manipulated again. And I said, the great thing is, I know I'm gullible. I know that we are all vulnerable. But no, I'm probably less manipula manipulable than most people because I've spent 40 years studying the methods of manipulation and teaching people about them. What is the Sea Org? And why do you sign a billion year pledge? LOL. The Sea Organization was started in 1967 by Ron Hubbard when he was basically being chased out of pretty much all of the English speaking world. So he took to international waters so he could be safe from prosecution. And he called his followers initially the Sea Project uh, C-S-E-A, as in a body of water, and then the Sea Organization. Somebody joked to him that they ought to sign contracts that would go beyond one lifetime, as Scientology believes in reincarnation, and put forward the idea that it should be for a billion years. How many Scientologists are there? About 25,000 around the world now. They have claimed as many as 11 million members over the years. The last census in 2021 showed 1,800 Scientologists in the UK which was a decline of 24% over the 10 years leading up to it. Is Scientology a cult? Well, what's a cult? By dictionary definition, a cult is a, a group of people who have reverence for a particular discipline or a particular leader. And in those terms, yes, Scientology is a cult. I would go one further. Is Scientology a dangerous cult? And from my point of view, it most definitely is. What is auditing? Originally, the word comes from to audit or, or listen, but it's basically a set of hypnotic procedures that are used on Scientologists to bring about states of euphoria so that they'll want to buy more. There are uh, counselling sessions which are called auditing, where um, one individual will audit another individual as if they were the counsellor and the other person was the recipient of counselling. There are about 2,000 processes that are used, and they vary from straight memory questions, asking you about something that happened in the past, through to trying to get you to relive trauma, uh, which is what was called Dianetics originally. It's a technique that was abandoned by Freud because it didn't work. It made people more dependent upon the therapist, Freud said. What is an e-meter? Uh, the e-meter is a Wheatstone bridge. Um, it basically, measures the conductivity of the skin on your hands. Uh, it's a part of the police polygraph uh, used in the United States extensively, and it has no value whatsoever. During most forms of auditing, the auditor will have an e-meter in front of them, which has a dial with a needle on it, and um, that is connected to two electrodes, which are usually soup cans, or conventionally work. And that measures the electrical resistance on, on your skin, on your hands. Uh, in fact, the movements in your sweat glands, they're not sweat itself. And the needle will move according to the questions that you're asked. Uh, and there are a number of different needle movements that are supposed to indicate something. What are the OT levels? OT stands for operating thetan, and the word thetan is the being, the soul, the spirit, the self, the whole idea of Scientology is that you can become an operating Thetan. You are a Thetan, you are a being, but you're trapped inside your body. And using Scientology, you'll be able to exteriorize from your body and make things happen at a distance. Your intention will be roused up so that you are capable of performing miracles. If you wanted to blow a planet up, you could do it. These are the kind of stories that are told. The reality is, and I've interviewed more than a thousand Scientologists over the years, nobody achieves any of these abilities. You go through a set of procedures, by my reckoning at the moment, there are 28 levels on Scientology's bridge, and you go through those step by step. By the time I left, I'd done 25 of them. So I'd finished the fifth operating Thetan level. The great secret is, that you're not meant to know, that you're inhabited by millions of little beings, 
and you have to get rid of them. So it's primarily a modern form of demon exorcism um, and it is ineffectual. If, it, if they were able, if they did have these powers, then obviously they'd be aware of what I'm doing now and would be able to stop me from speaking. It hasn't happened in 40 years. Should Scientology be classed as a religion? I would personally abstain on, on the question because I think it's up to people to decide what their religion is. Should it have special privileges on a religious basis, for example, tax exemption? Absolutely not. Uh, it's harmful to the community, so it should not have such benefits. There are places in the world, particularly the United States, where um, Scientology has tax exemption. It's exempt from certain taxes in this country as well. So exactly. you're paying for them, basically. <laughs> How does Scientology handle criticism of the cult? It uses a process, procedure called fair game, which is to say that if you're opposed to Scientology, you do not deserve to live, and everything can and may be done to silence you. I was harassed on a daily basis for 16 years after I left Scientology and spoke out. There's a, a process called noisy investigation. It's written up in Scientology uh, and approved by Ron Hubbard. And what a Scientology agent will do is they'll get a list of everybody you know, including your doctor, your dentist, your travel agent, whoever, your friends, your family. They will then contact every person on, on the list, whether directly or on the phone, and say, we're gathering information about John Atak or whoever, uh, and their criminal background. We found out some really interesting things already. I had this done to me, and my mother-in-law, my one of my brothers-in-law, decided to talk to the private detective who'd been sent over from Los Angeles. He travelled as far as Australia to find people who'd known me. It was put about that I was a recovered heroin addict. I've never taken heroin in my life. I, I was a rapist. I'd attempted murder. I'd molested children. These are standard stories that are told about critics of Scientology. They're made up. I was told when the head of the harassment division in the UK defected after a conversation with me, and she told me that they'd spent two million pounds harassing me up until that point. It was um, incredibly destructive. It took me 17 years to recover um, my physical health. All through litigation, they sued me in America, they sued me here, and through legal costs, I was bankrupted. My marriage fell apart, my health came apart. It took me about 17 years to, to get back to a place where I could um, stand up again. What is the Celebrity Center? The Celebrity Center was um, started by a woman called Yvonne Gillum, who became Yvonne Jensch, in Los Angeles um, in the 1970s. And the target was to find celebrities, recruit celebrities, and use them to promote Scientology. That's how John Travolta and Chick Corea and quite a lot of other people became involved. It's worth saying that as many celebrities as they've managed, managed to keep hold of, they've also lost. So Van Morrison, for example, and Leonard Cohen were both briefly involved in Scientology. There is a, a rule within Scientology that if you upset a celebrity, then you are in trouble. So these people are treated with kid gloves. What happens to children inside the church? That's variable. If you are born to a family who are public Scientologists, then you may have a fairly normal upbringing in that you'll be in society and you'll go to an ordinary school. But you may also go to a Scientology school where you'll be the principles of Scientology will be used in your education. Um, these, this is not very effective. I've spoken to children, adults now, who grew up in this organisation, where there'd be one adult looking after 80 children. About 50% of the kids who grow up in Scientology will leave um, by the time they're 16. They will not want to stay. Quite a lot are thrown out if they cause any sort of trouble. Um, that they'll just be got rid of. What is a silent birth? In Scientology, it's expected that, that women will, will give birth without making a noise. Hubbard put forward the idea that if we're not unconscious or during unconsciousness, we're still recording what's being said around us and this can act in a kind of moronic way through the hypnotic mind, what he called the reactive mind. And so he put forward the idea that birth should be in silence so that the baby doesn't receive what he called engrams, these traumatic 
um, memories. It's, it's a nonsense because the reality is, and we know this, that we don't register memories when we're unconscious. It, they, we're not physically capable of it. It's demonstrated by if you ask a boxer who's been knocked out what happened in the 10 seconds up to him being knocked out, he won't remember. Do you have to pay to be a member and if yes, how much? Yes, you either go and work for them 90 hours a week on a rice and beans diet where you're no longer allowed to have children, you're forced to have abortions in fact these days, or if, if you've got the money, you pay for it. And the prices are very variable because you pay by the hour. To get through all of Scientology, you're probably talking in the region of half a million pounds now to get to the level that I got to. I didn't pay that much. There's also, there's a prohibition on free Scientology. The idea is if you've given something for free, you won't appreciate it, so you should be charged. At the moment, I, I'm not sure what their highest price is, probably about $500 an hour to sit in one of their sessions. Recruiting is free. Uh, once you've been recruited, they'll sell you a five pound or 10 pound course. And they'll say, we've got lots of these courses. You don't have to do the expensive courses. But as soon as they can, they'll put you into a hard sell situation. And the presumption you just force somebody through to the next level. I've met people who borrowed hundreds of thousands of pounds so they could do Scientology and then found they couldn't repay it. And of course, they'd be told by the registrar or salesperson, Scientology will increase your abilities so much that you'll be able to earn this money in no time. It's not true. I met one guy who'd spent $400,000 in a week and at the end of the week was admitted to a hospital with a heart attack. I'd probably have a heart attack if I'd spent that much money. What do you know about Shelley Miscavige? Shelley Miscavige is David Miscavige's lawful wife. She went missing years ago. Nobody knows where she is. Um, she's not made an appearance in years. The journalist Tony Ortega has been trying to find her. Um, and as yet, we have no idea where she is. She is one of the disappeared. Is there a uniform? Now this is coming from somebody who wants to join and they're going, oh, if that's a good uniform, I'll get in. There is a uniform, it's the US Coast Guard's uniform, in fact. So not very exciting. Um, members of the Sea Organization wear this uniform. So they also wear campaign ribbons, which is against the law in this country and in the United States, but nobody prosecutes them for them. If, for it. They're not actually for having fought battles or been wounded or anything. Can you be a Christian and a Scientologist? No. Hubbard frequently said that you could practice any religion and be a Scientologist, but you can of course only practice it if you believe in reincarnation, if you believe you've lived on other planets, and if you're willing to accept as you get further into Scientology that Hubbard dismisses Christ, Christ as an implant. Christ is a hypnotic invention, there never was a Christ, according to Hubbard. He also says that heaven is a fabrication and that the crucifixion and Christ is just a control mechanism. At the very end of his life, he released a, and it only came out two years after he died and only a handful of people saw it, but he wrote a thing where he claimed that he was himself the antichrist. So if you're a Christian and you want to get into something that was developed by the Antichrist, then maybe. Is it true they record sessions and blackmail you with them? Yes, all auditing sessions are recorded. Um, in fact, nowadays they're, they're often filmed. Mm. Blackmail you with them. Yes, that has happened. Um, whether it still happens, I don't know. But there, were certain, there certainly have been cases where things that were given in the greatest confidence and you will end up saying, every embarrassing thing you've ever done at some point that will go on the record with them. I think for many people it's just the threat that it may be revealed. Um, many people have come to me over the years and said they had a terrible experience with Scientology and they'd love to do something about it, but they don't want their children to be able to read about their sex lives when they were teenagers, <laughs> something to that effect. So. Sometimes it's just that people are frightened it might be revealed, but there have been cases. What do you know about the hole? The hole was set up by David Miscavige at his secret base in Gilman Hot Springs in California. Um, this is a huge property where the, you have pressure pads all around the inside of the property of the fence and the razor wire faces inward so you can't climb out. Um, the hole is placed there. It's a double trailer. so. 
two mobile home sections. And uh, he, Miscavige started putting his executives into it when they annoyed him. Mike Rinder, in his book, uh, Billion Years, says that at peak there are 140 Scientology executives in there sharing two toilets and being allowed to go to the shower for 30 seconds a day or something in another building. I think it ran for eight years and all of the top executives of Scientology, they'd be taken out to go to public meetings with their uniforms on, then they'd go back to be in the hole because Miscavige was displeased with them. It's, it's Scientology's gulag. The problem if law enforcement become involved is if they say to you, you know, are you here of your own free will? And you say yes, then there's nothing much they can do. Um, and if you say no, you'll be thrown out of Scientology uh, forever. So it, it was said uh, the largest raids in the history of the FBI were on Scientology in July 1977. And um, Lawrence Wright in Going Clear wondered why was it that the people who are in the, the prison detention force, the rehabilitation project force, why didn't they just leave? And he not understood that this is not an ordinary situation. They knew that if they left, they would be labelled as suppressive persons and would not be allowed to continue in Scientology. So the amount of programming is, is very profound. Are you ashamed of your past? No. <laughs> I, I wasn't a live-in member of Scientology. Nobody that I recruited into Scientology is still with it. And a few thousand people have left because of me. There are people who did awful and brutal things in Scientology and, you know, while we can say, you know, I was manipulated, I wasn't in control of what I did, and that is a fair point, I think we all have to take responsibility for what we've done. Frequently and normally in the SEA organisation, people are sleep deprived um, for days on end. They're, they're forced to stay awake. Um, there have been situations where on the rehabilitation project force, which I mentioned, the, the labour camp, that people are they're given leftover food. Now, this is in a place where rice and beans is the normal diet, so they get the leftovers. You'd often find cockroaches in the food or maggots, things like that, and you either ate that or you didn't eat. Part of that process was also what's called pig's birthing, where you would no longer be allowed a mattress and David Miscavige reintroduced this idea. So you could be on the rehabilitation project force usually for a couple of years. You could only speak when spoken to, you had to run between your jobs, you had to wear black or a black armband to show your status, you cleaned the toilets. If you defied any order you were told you'd have to run a lap and you'd be working an incredibly long day. You then have the practice of overboarding that Ron Hubbard introduced in 1968, where for the slightest infraction aboard his ship during training, you would be thrown overboard. And that doesn't sound too bad. Only that would be from 25 to 40 feet high. You might not be able to swim. You'd be blindfolded. Your ankles would be tied together. And you'd be thrown into the sewage-full waters of Corfu Harbour when he started this, because other boats would be letting out their human sewage into the harbour. So. People had this forced upon them, and there were the people who did it to other people. How do Scientologists recruit new members? Usually by word of mouth, usually it would be a friend. But they go out on the street with a little clipboard and they ask inane questions. Um, the ones I used were, what would you most like to be? What would you most like to do? What would you most like to have? And once you've established rapport or conversation with somebody, you ask them if they'd like a free personality test and in they go. Do they keep people against their will? Yes, that has happened. There was a case in America where 11 Scientologists, including L. Ron Hubbard's wife, Mary Sue, were sent to prison. And one of the things they were found guilty of was false imprisonment, where they kidnapped a man called Michael Meisner because he was going to tell on them, and they held him captive for months. Do Scientologists prey on the vulnerable? Uh, yes, but a specific type of vulnerable, um, one of the other awful things about Scientology, and something I wasn't really aware of, is that uh, they don't recruit disabled people. Hubbard said, we're here to make the able more able. So they won't prey on people who are, have a psychiatric background, because that's got them into trouble in the past. They won't 
prey upon people who are physically disabled. They really, if they can, as with any group, they want the smartest and best of people and they get some of them. They get some, had some quite remarkable people. In fact, that a number of members of parliament and the Senate have been Scientologists is interesting. Who did you believe you were in a past life? I wish I hadn't actually pulled this, this one out because I'm going to sound stupid, but there you go. I believed I'd been Henri Matisse, the painter. I also, for a while, believed I'd been the Buddha. So, a bit of a narcissist, really, what can I say? <laughs> we later found that as there were millions of spirits in us, I probably could have had one of the Buddhas and one of Henry Matisse's. But, uh, what was the best part of it, anything you missed? There was a tremendous sense of camaraderie and, and the idea that you were changing the world. I mean, you go from that to realising you're in Sainsbury's buying a bag of potatoes. <laughs> you know, yesterday I was saving the world, now I'm buying a bag of potatoes. It's a bit of a letdown. Do you have to abandon your friends and family only if they don't like Scientology? If somebody complains, yes, you're meant to disconnect from them. Do Scientologists believe in the afterlife? Yes, they believe in reincarnation. But unlike Buddhists and Hindus who have the fear of the eternal return, you know, the wheel of suffering. It's a horrible thing to be reincarnated. This is more the new art, new age kind of thing. Oh, I'll drop my body and then I can do it in my next lifetime. Which means the suicide rate is much higher in Scientology than the world around because people will give up and think they have another life coming. And that is my experience. That Scientology has about 10 times the suicide rate of the normal population. They don't believe in heaven. Hubbard went there and said it was made from cardboard. For me, as a kid from the 90s, it was normal for me um, and for my other comrades to tattoo a swastika. I used to have a swastika here in the middle. 